Uh, look here, man. What's going on, bro? <laughs> My voice has sort of made a semi-return. But I'm so glad to be back. What's going on, man? In the new year. Hey, baby, this is 2021. We're going to have some fun. And you know what we came to do. You know who it is. You know what it is. It's the sizzle. <laughs> hey, Jay, how you feeling, man? Man, feeling pretty good, man. I was on the remit. Now I'm on the... Almost mended, but uh, we're back back in the saddle again. Had a yes, couple sir. of people contact me, say, "Hey, man, we haven't been on for a while." I'm like, "Yeah, you need to go to the YouTube page because that's where we are, and we are gonna put a little hit out there for the people on Facebook to point them over there." But man, glad to be back on. Glad to be back with you, brother. Hey, man, it is a wonderful event. It's a wonderful time. We got to get it this in and get it in popping. Because we've got one of the biggest football games oh, yeah, in no Bears doubt. history. No doubt. In Bears history. No doubt. Bears this, history. This might change everything. Might change oh, the course of the season. It might. No, it might, it's going to change the trajectory of people's lives. I mean, I'm not saying that tongue-in-cheek. You're talking some jobs are going to be won or lost. Coming about this turnaround, about what's going to happen at the end of this game that starts at 315 Sunday between the Bears yeah. and the Packers. Uh, it's absolutely, you know, th this is it. This is for all the marbles, um, whatever else you want to throw in there, whatever, whatever other cliche you want to toss in there. That's what this is all about. This is going to be an amazing football game. It's amazing that you can look at this and go, hey, flip a coin on this one. Well, let's get ready to talk about it. Let's get ready to do it. You like that? Like that. So you let's like talk that. about it. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I like it. I you like it. Like you like it, it three lot. times. You like it three times. I see. Uh... You like that? <laughs> yes, sir. I do like that. And yeah. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you something about these 12 and three Packers and eight and seven Bears. Yeah. Is it's it's getting me ready for as you said, Jay. This is this is trajectory time. This is franchise shaping. This is motivating. This is moving and grooving. This is everything that you want to put in. This is it. In the great words of the songwriter, Kenny Loggins, this is it. Well, you know, the thing about this game is that this is not a Bears team that's barely above 500. No, this is a resurgence, a Bears team that has risen from the ashes. And its last Bear team has been on a tear in its last five ball games. And these are the guys who the Packers are going to have to play. You got a Mitchell Trubisky right here in the last five games that's thrown for 19 touchdowns. He has a passer rating, I think, over 93. He's been looking good. And I'm one of the few people who came from the beginning talking about it was time to move Mitch along if they weren't going to change how they were playing Mitch. Now they've changed how they're playing Mitch and they see what we're going to see what he's doing. But the issue is right now, can Mitch do it in crunch time? That's the biggest problem. Yeah, I'm wondering now if we really are seeing not only a resurgence, but the emergence of Mitchell Trubisky and being that quarterback that, you know, Pace, Ryan Pace saw somewhere. Well, I don't know what Matt Nagy sees, but I know Ryan Pace saw it somewhere be it when he went out to watch him or somewhere on the field, he envisioned that this would happen. Well, he, we, we knew Nag it wasn't Nagy that saw it because no. Nag Nagy has been throwing a wrench in this, this uh, uh, Trubisky's engine here for the last almost four years. He finally got out from in front of Mitchell Trubisky when he turned over the play calling duties, when he bailed out of the play calling duties, let's put it that way. And Laser figured out like, everybody else who was a Bears fan who had any form of football knowledge knew that if you roll Mitchell out, get him on the edge, get him going, reading half a fill, let his legs come into play, that he could be a more than serviceable quarterback in the NFL. We're seeing him able to do that right now. We see Mitchell, in spite of Matt Nagy, is actually doing what we thought Mitchell could do. He showed shot signs of this back in 2018 when they were rolling Mitch out. But for some reason, Mitch Nagy, Matt Nagy, wanted to make him a pocket passer. This guy's not that. So it's gonna be. Look, I, I'm excited about this game tomorrow, man. That uh, um, I, the Bears have an absolute chance to win this thing. But sneakily, 
for you all who aren't paying attention, all you Mahomey fans out there, you're probably looking at a quarterback up north who's probably going to win the MVP. You know, you're talking about 44 touchdowns that uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers has up there, and he's sneakily been the best quarterback in the league this year by far. So it's going to be real interesting. Want to see what the Bears are going to be able to do, but I'm super excited about this. You know, the Bears have a avenue to get to Aaron Rodgers this time with their right tackle out. I think this is a prime time. But you know what, Jay? The thing that's most amazing is you look at Lamar Jackson, who's getting ready to eclipse a second thousand yard season of yeah. rushing. One of the only quarterbacks in the history of the NFL to have back to back thousand yard rushing seasons. Right now, you're looking at Mitch and you're thinking to yourself, had this come about earlier, and I'm, I know all things are in due time, but had this come about earlier, had we had Nagy willing to work a system around Mitchell that would have been effective for him as we went on, maybe we wouldn't have seen the six-game slide. Maybe we wouldn't have seen everything that we saw up to this point. But the last thing that we need to know is right now, if there's any time for the defense to step up, if it's any time for Robert Quinn to show he's worth a dollar in the league, and if it's any time for this Bears offense and defense to come together and one, it's this game. I, I, it, this is cinematic. This is epic. You've never – it's Bears, Packers, last game, all the marbles. I, 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 you should sell this on Netflix. That's how good this is. Yeah, you know, the thing is right now is that – how do I want to say this? This Bears game is probably the game, not of the decade. I, I want to say this is probably one of the most important games that the Bears have had since they played in the Super Bowl. And the reason why I'm going to say this is that because not since that time, has there been a team, and I'm going to say this, if the Bears can beat the Packers and they get in the playoffs with Mitchell Trubisky playing like this, all of a sudden I think they're a dangerous ball club. All of a sudden I don't think that's a team, that's a club that any one of these clubs out here want to meet are the, are the Bears with this defense, and also you got a Mitchell Trubisky who could put points up on the board. Um, they could be... A, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, they wouldn't let me jump on the bad wagon, so I'm not going to get on. It's still rolling down the street. But this is a team, if they play well against the Packers, the show well against the Packers, who are going to play their number one guys because they have something to play for. They want that number one seat. They want that, that, they want that bye week. That this is a situation that the Bears show well and get after the Packers and beat and win this game convincingly. This might be one of the teams, not only best teams in the NFC, but could be one of the best teams in the NFL. You know what's crazy is we've never seen, and maybe you can remember a time where it was a complete collapse. Everything was a disaster, and it was getting ready to come to a head. You had a GM that was getting ready to be fired, a head coach that's getting ready to be dismissed. Your starting quarterback was going to be released. You're probably going to let your leading receiver walk you still have no offensive lineman. Your defense would get a year older. You're up against the cap. And, oh, by the way, you have bad draft position. All of that, a confluence into now, if the Bears win and you get a solid victory out of them, you get a reprieve for Ryan Pace. Matt Nagy probably comes back. You re-sign Mitchell Trubisky. You work out an extension with Allen Robinson, and now you're a contender next year. You're a serious threat, not only in the NFC, but in the NFL, to be one of the best teams in the league. I don't think we've ever seen a turnabout or a 180 in this sense before. And I, I could be wrong. If I read correctly, I don't think there's ever been a team that's had a six-game losing streak and made, the, and made the playoffs. I don't think that's happened in NFL history. The question is now, this hurdle they got to jump is huge. You got Aaron Rodgers, who's won the last 17 of 19 games that he's played in. So mm -hmm. we might be doing a lot of rah-rah, drinking the Kool-Aid right now, and Aaron Rodgers goes out here and does Aaron Rodgers things. 
what has to happen, though, for the Bears to win is that Mitchell Trubisky has to do Aaron Rodgers things. He don't have to be mm. Aaron Rodgers, but he's got to be Aaron Rodgers' light. He's got to go out here and do and make these throws. He's going to have to make some throws. He's going to have to push the ball downfield. He's going to have to use his, his legs and run. He's going to have to make smart decisions and definitely not throw the ball in double and triple coverage. So we got to hope that Mitchell Trubisky can channel his inner Aaron Rodgers like he did in 2018 uh, when they when they played heads up and have an opportunity to win this football game. Because the Packers, I want to say the Packers are winning this series. I want to say it was like the last eight or nine out of 12 the Packers have won. Something like that. I might, I might have that number backwards. But uh, this is the time right now. And I don't know if it's just so happy. This sort of reminds me of, of you know, you're trying to ask a, a young lady out and she said no, and she said no, and she hung up the phone and everything else. And all of a sudden, you look up five weeks later, she calls you. Hey, what you doing? You know, hey, I want to see, you know, maybe you want to go catch a movie or something like that. Now you're all giddy, but you don't realize that the guy that she'd been going out with had just dumped her. That's the reason why she's calling you. So, I, you know, it's a happy point in time, but it's also you could be set up for a, for a heartbreak on this. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, this is going to be one for the ages. But you know what? There is one person I think that made all of this a reality in a sneaky way, in an unexpected way. In fact, in a way nobody has looked at. I think the one player that's affected the trajectory of how this is moved and how we're working this is Tariq Cohen. And yeah, I'm saying injury, that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. His injury then forced you to make a lead back out of David Montgomery. Yeah. It forced you to move away from trickeration yeah. and gadget plays and then trying to run him up the middle, trying to run him up the A or the B gap. Now you had to put in a full-time back to take the responsibility. Even when you try to bring in your wide receiver, kick returner as a running back, and we'll see how it works for the Saints with them having a whole running back room that now is COVID positive and under protocols yeah. and nobody for the Saints will be able to play. But with the Bears, you didn't have the Tariq Cohen, Cordell Pat. You didn't have all of these people to muddy up the waters. So now you're forced to give David Montgomery 30 carries. You're yeah. forced to say, we need 100 yards out of our back. And now you've got to call run plays. You've got to ground and pound. You've got to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. The best way, the fastest way, and the most effective way to beat Aaron Rodgers is to keep him off the field. And it also forced the Bears to put a run-orientated offensive line together. You know, this isn't, this isn't a offensive line that you're going to sit up here and drop back and throw the ball 45, 50 times a game. It's not designed for that. These guys are maulers up front. You got the you got the golden domers up front, um, who are used to grounding and pounding. Even they got grounded and pounding a couple of days ago, um, but they're used to coming off the ball, and hitting people in the mouth, and so that's what the Bears have been able to do with the David Montgomery. That's how he ran in Iowa, an uh, Iowa State. But that's how he ran. He was that guy who could get in between the tackles and gonna make it happen. So now you have a situation with the Chicago Bears, that the this new identity that they've created for themselves. Because this is not the Bears that we started to, at the beginning of the season. This is a naggy less Bears right now. This is naggy light. This, ain't, it, it, this doesn't even look like a naggy based offense right now. And I believe because they have just simplified this down, let's run the football, Let's get the ball out to number 12 out there who they need to pay. That guy runs all the routes that you want to run. And now all of a sudden, too, you saw a resurgence of the tight ends, especially one one young fella who's the 34-year-old now who looks like he's 24 years old out there catching the ball all over the place because now plays are being called for these tight ends because you really don't have other wide receivers to push the ball to instead of Robinson. So, you look at that offense that's been dumbed down to the point where it's simple enough for um, Mitchell Trubisky to actually 
do what he needs to do and to make changes within the offensive scheme and the check with me system at the on the line. So this is a new form of Bears right here. Now, is this form of Bears going to be this way next year? Don't know. We, st- we still might see some fire going on. I mean, if they go out here and get hammered, um, then we then we might see the axe fall across a whole lot of other people's decks. But if they play well, we don't know what's going to happen. But at least they, act, they gave themselves an opportunity. Yeah, this is the big – this is why we say it's franchise-changing, life-changing, because this changes the courses everybody, of everyone's career. This is actually the difference between you having a job next year and you not having a job next year. And it gives you, as you said, it gives you that base offense that you need. We talked about it a lot. We've talked about consistency and coaches needing time to have consistency. Yeah. I'm I'm a believer that you have to give some, you have to let people, to let people shine, you have to give them opportunities to fail. That is the only way that they learn how to shine and how to get better is they have to go through the bumps and bruises, the heartache and pain of failure. But if you keep changing DCs, OCs, you keep changing the head coach, the general manager, every three or four years and cycle them through, that's what you're going to have. I'm happy to see that there is a resurgence for the Bears. I'd like to see Matt Nagy pull this off. I'd like to see Ryan Pace successful, not because I root for them as individuals, but because you need consistency. If you're going to get anything out of Mitchell Trubisky, if we're not going back to another 10 years of Bears futility in football, and believe you me, if they lose Mitchell Trubisky, if they lose this this game and, and things go left, you have a rebuilding team. And you see how that's working now for the Jets. You see how it's working for Jacksonville. Jacksonville jettisoned their whole defense. Jacksonville, two seasons ago, defense was as good as the Bears, maybe even better. No doubt. Because they were better at the corner position. So now you see a team that's jockeying and vying for a position. So, Jay, let's talk about a little bit of what the, the kind of the wild card is, is that what happened yesterday when we talk about Ohio State Clemson? Yeah. Now, I know people have, have put it out there, and I think we've even had the discussion about uh, who's the better quarterback. Uh-huh. Which one? Is Clemson's quarterback better, or is Ohio State's quarterback just as good? What we saw last night, a trouncing, 49-28. I, I, it was... It was a devastating loss. And you saw Justin Fields step into the spotlight. Now, I know he still has a game to go. But this is the same thing we were talking about with Deshaun Watson. This is the same thing we talked about with Cam Newton. When great players get a chance to shine, that's what they do. They step up and they begin to play. So, again, maybe thanks to the Bears, the Jags might get the number one overall pick might be the Jets but again I'm going to ask you Jay if you have to take the number one pick are you taking Justin Fields or are you taking uh the Clemson kid Trevor Lawrence you don't even get your name called anymore Trevor Lawrence I'm taking Trevor Lawrence hands down he's still the best NFL ready quarterback Justin Fields had a great ball game he played tough A lot of that great ball game just revolved around that Ohio State had a chip on their shoulder and they went out here and they beat a depleted Clemson football team. And they took it to them. They out-muscled, out-hustled them. They out-hit them. And it was just an overall great team effort. You You saw a situation where the Clemson quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, was in running around mode. The Ohio State Buccaneers were getting after him. Um, He was starting to stand tall in the pocket, and he just couldn't get it done. He didn't have a poor night. He didn't have a great night. But we look at a situation with Justin Fields, who had one of those great nights. He was the natural. He was hitting the ball. The the lights were coming, you know, hitting the ball into the scoreboards. He just had a great night. He was throwing the ball in in between some coverages that were so tight. There were two touchdowns he threw that, 
if you gave him a hundred times to put that ball into the same uh, narrow window that he put it in, I don't know if he's able to do it again. I mean, you had guys literally missing the football by a pinky, and he went through two guys. So he just had a great night. But overall, overall, I think he did great to show how tough he is. He did great to show that he has the arm to throw the ball 60 yards downfield. But there's no doubt in my mind that Trevor Lawrence is still the number one rated quarterback in the in the in the country right now. There's no doubt about that. He's ready. But here's the thing I liked about Trevor Lawrence, even though they were getting their butts handed to him. And I wonder when Dabo Sweeney pulled him over to the side, I wonder if he was telling them then I'm going to take you out because of this draft situation. And Trevor Lawrence says, No, I'm gonna stay out here with my guys and go down to the last swing. So here's a guy that stood in there, took his butt whooping. Uh, he wasn't crying at the end of the game, but he still hands down the best quarterback, and I believe he's going to go number one overall. Well, you know, it's funny you just mentioned uh, Buccaneers. Now, I know the Ohio State team was good, and they were playing oh, I'm sorry, yeah. like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers <laughs> and because it was a, a drubbing. It was a disaster. Yeah. It was, hey, it was play, everything I'm, you needed it to be. I'm playing but, hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, you know what? You had it right because Brutus Buckeye, their mascot. That's my dude. Yeah. It was like he was out there slapping people around. It was a terrible, terrible thing, but I don't think it affects Trevor Lawrence's draft status. But to that point, I will say, I think now you've gotten a window into who Justin Fields is. Well, I don't think that you could lose with taking a Justin Fields high in the first round within the top five picks. Well, yeah, and that's true, but you got to look at Trevor Lawrence too. He still threw for 400 plus yards. And he still threw for almost, almost 70%. And he was getting his butt handed to him, and he still threw for 400. So what I'm saying to you is, is that under duress, he was still able to get the ball downfield. Was he able to put the, put the uh, points on the board? No. But if you look at that game, he didn't have a chance to put points on the board. I don't care what quarterback. We all know this for sure. If your front seven can get after your quarterback, I don't care who you put back there. You could have put Aaron Rodgers behind that Clemson O-line, and they would have had a problem with that Ohio State line. That's just the way it is. Ohio State just outplayed them in the trenches. Now, let's say this. If the game was even, if the game was even in the trenches, or had Justin Fields been under the same pressure as Trevor Lawrence, would he have been able to produce the same way he was able to produce? You really didn't see, you saw the one big hit on Justin Fields. But beyond that, you didn't see a lot of him getting tattooed all over the place. He was able to stand strong in the pocket, move forward in the pocket, and throw the football. You give any good quarterback that opportunity and he can throw the football downfield, they're going to put points on the board. They're going to throw for high numbers. So I like Justin Field, don't get me wrong. I think he's one of the best quarterbacks. I think Trask out of Florida is good. There's a number of guys. Kid I really liked was a kid from – um um. Desmond Ritter from, mm -hmm. um, oh, where was he from? Gosh, dog it. I'm looking at him now. You can't, you can't say that you like him and then you don't know where he's from. Of course I can. I'm playing, I'm playing hurt, sir. I'm under medication yeah. right now. Let me look this guy up right quick. <laughs> you cannot just say, Desmond. hey, I like, I like him, but I don't know where he's from. I mean, he's okay. You know, yeah, my, he's a Cincinnati Bearcat, but you yeah, know, well, you who would who who would have thought of the Bearcats? But anyway, a hey, Ritter Ritter looked good. I would look at Desmond Ritter as a guy. He reminds me a lot of a Lamar Jackson type, not the super speed, but the athleticism and the arm. He could throw the football, and he's a guy who I think is going to creep up the draft board. Hopefully not far. That's a guy, If I don't know where the Bears are going to be picking next year. I haven't looked. But that's a guy, if he's there anywhere in that second round and he's available, I think that's a guy you go try to get. He's fast. Um, he could deliver the football. Uh, he played really well. And um, he, he looked like he's, he's a guy who had that team right there at the brink of winning a, a ball game against a, a vaunted Georgia team that when I first started watching this game, I thought Cincinnati was going to get smoked. And uh, this kid played extremely well. So that's another guy who's going to get moved up. So if you look at these different quarterbacks out here, I think uh, what's really helped a lot 
of teams right now is because you've had a lot of success with the smaller quarterback. You've had success um, with the Russell Wilson types. You've had success with the Kyler Murray types. You've had success with great success with Patrick Mahomes, even though he's came back to earth a little bit now. Um, but you see guys like that, mobile quarterbacks with a big arm, you're going to start seeing those guys being taken. But going back to your original question, from the beginning, though, that number one quarterback, and he's mobile on top of it, and he's tough, uh, is, is, is Trevor Lawrence. The only thing I did not see a lot of Trevor Lawrence yesterday, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more bark out of Trevor Lawrence, especially when they were getting their butts handed to him. I would like to have seen some some Tom Brady come out at him. We just start, you know, a little screaming on the sidelines, getting his guys going. But maybe that's not in his makeup. I don't know. But um, I just believe overall he's the best quarterback out there. Well, when you look at what the proposed draft order is, you've got Jacksonville number one, the Jets two, Dolphins three, Falcons four, Bengals five, Philly is at six, the Lions seven, Giants eight, Panthers are nine, and then the Broncos 10. You do have some teams that are quarterback deficient, and the Bears right now are slated all the way at the 20th spot. Yeah. So I don't know. If Mitch does well, then I would think the natural transition would be you need a franchise left tackle. Don't know if you can find one at 20. You might find a franchise right tackle at 20. You might find a franchise left guard at 20 or right guard. Whatever it is, you need to invest now in that line. But I don't think, and it's just me, I don't think Justin Fields makes it out of the top 10. I don't think he does. I think there are too many teams that need a quarterback. You've got the Jets who are going to need a quarterback. Uh, If the Falcons do pull off this trade with the Colts, and send Matty Ice to the Colts. The Falcons are going to need somebody. I don't know what's going to happen with Jalen Hurts. Brother has looked good, but you might have an opening there. The Lions, you might have an opening. And definitely when you get to the Panthers and the Broncos, somewhere in there, a Justin Fields could be, especially for the Carolina Panthers, he could be your replacement for Cam Newton. So I think no matter what, these two quarterbacks did themselves a world of good and i still like lawrence i I like trevor lawrence but justin fields is right behind him and i don't think that he's going to be that far off from being one of the best quarterbacks out of this class that comes out and maybe quite possibly the best quarterback out of the class you know know. well yeah you never know i mean that's true but it's a lot to say because of one really great football game um, right. That and he had one really great football game. What I look at Trevor Lawrence this is his second loss ever. This is a guy. Now he's played on a Clemson team. Now this Clemson mm-hmm. team's been one of the better Clemson teams out there. But this is a guy who has been lighting it up for three straight years. And yeah. so we look at it, Justin Fields. Like, can you stay on this trajectory? You know, that's my biggest thing with him. Is like this was a big explosion, but where was the explosion? You you needed you needed this before. Now was it a situation you just didn't get opportunity? It's possible, you know. It's it's possible. You look at the the quarterback from Alabama, uh, Sam Jones. Same type of situation. Here's the guy who had to sit behind Tua Tua Yagavoga. I can never say his name right. And he had to sit behind. Um, and he had to sit behind Hurts uh, until it was his time to play. And all of a sudden he comes out. And he lights it. He lights up Notre Dame. So the question is right now: Is this just a guy? who has been sitting in the wings and, and all of a sudden he gets a chance to shine or this was a one-off. Uh, we're going to find out against Alabama. Now, if he comes mm-hmm. out and gives us three touchdowns and he throws for 400 against Alabama, then again, I'm going to be trying to run and jump on the uh, the, the field's uh, bandwagon. They probably won't let me on, but he's got to, against this type of competition, I want to see him do it against the best and let's see what happens. Well, I'm going to tell you, you're going to start drinking the Kool-Aid, my friend. As someone told me a few weeks ago that I reminded them of Dan Jiggett, it's impossible because I have no hair and Dan Jiggett has a little hair. So I don't know how that works, <laughs> but I do like drinking the Kool-Aid. What I don't like is uh, murder rap charges. I don't like that at all. Murder. I don't like that. Murder. 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 It was murder. Blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah, wow. murder he wrote. Former Chicago Bears Super Bowl champion arrested on murder charges in Phoenix. Murder, Jay. Can I tell you about it? Can I tell you about it? Wow. Uh, <laughs> former Bears all-star, all-pro quarterback, Michael Richardson, who's 59, yeah. who played with the 85 Super Bowl team. He's LA, LA Mike. Mike. Yeah. And uh, he's uh, he's looking at doing some time. And hopefully somebody doesn't give him life. He does. He I, is. He's yes. You know, I yeah. was taken aback because I wasn't keeping up too much on ex bears um, <laughs> uh, uh, police blotter news. Um, yes, I, I wasn't keeping up on former criminality that was going on. But L.A. Mike did not uh, leave Compton. You could you could take the player out of Compton. But you can't take the count to not the player, apparently. And uh, L.A. Mike has been in do, getting in the work now for uh, a long time. Mm-hmm. A long time. And he has a rap sheet. And I'm like, yeah. oh, whoa. Uh, right. This could be this could, this could be one. This could be one of those. Uh, uh, this, this is better than O.J. and the Bronco right here. Let me tell you something. He's got a rap sheet. And I don't mean an iTunes playlist either. This man has been doing stuff since he got out the league, son. He has wanted, he has been caught with marijuana, weed, meth. He's got guns, fun, ladies, crazy. He's got it all together, and he's crazy. I'm crazy. What? Um, what? I mean, I just don't, I mean, you're talking only about three years from when he got out the league that he was getting busted doing stuff. This shows me, if you've been arrested 16 times, Mm-hmm. That tells me you're not really that good of a criminal, unless you're just unless you're just really, really uh, doing a tremendous amount of crime. But we understand that he hasn't been doing a tremendous. He wasn't making a tremendous amount of money because he had a public defender. He couldn't even afford his own lawyer. Well, okay, let's go back to his song because you know he was in the Super Bowl shuffle, and you know he was L.A. Mike that plays it cool. They don't sneak sneak by me because I'm no fool. Well. Obviously, Mike, you don't sneak by anyone either. You are wanted in all kinds of things. All kinds. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Is I know you had to play against him. I know you had to play against him because he came out. He was an all-star at Arizona State. Yeah. Yeah. I know I know LA Mike. Play corner out there. So yeah, yeah. I'm just like, you know, look. I hate to see anything happen to anybody else, and I'm not going. I'm going to not make the obvious crack because he's the Arizona Sun Devil. That you know that you want to see anything go. But to me, this goes in. I'm not sure um, how much of this is from him, just him personally. This was his life, or is this a problem with some CTE that guys all of a sudden um, who are doing relatively okay? I mean, he made good money. He made it done, but he still had a house in a gated community in Mesa when he got when when he got arrested. So he still had enough money to operate on that. Is this a situation where a guy who got hit a number of times that all of a sudden he had um some some CTE issues, or was he just a bad guy from the whole time? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, maybe this was his way of making money. This is what he did. You know, he sold drugs. So, um, I don't know. It's just interesting. But guy has, you know, see, he had a felony warrant out there for him already. So he he had been getting clipped left and right, and he didn't really care much about going to jail. He had just beat a a, a thirteen year uh, deal. He only had to do three years of a thirteen year deal. You would think that we might get some people back on the straight and narrow, going, "Hey, man, I don't feel like doing that prison time," and and to him, it wasn't no big problem, you know. So uh, you know, you hate to see a guy. This happened to a guy, but just because you get to the league doesn't mean everything's going to be great for you. But you hate to see a Chicago Bear, a former Chicago Bear, um, being this. This has happened to him. But again, you know, you 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 know, when you, when you play you play your cards out here. Sometimes you go, you know, you, you're going to win, and then sometimes you're going to, you know, you you're you're going to. I was going to have a whole other thing going, and you're going to crap out. But I mean, you just hate to see this. But this guy, he's, he's going to go to jail and go to jail for a while now. Yeah, I would not want to go to jail in Maricopa County, but that's just me. But I will say this. It is 2021. It's time to have fun. And we're going to have fun all year with you. So just sit back and relax 
as we bring you the best content in the world. And you can find us on any social media platform. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. We're there. All you have to do is search for Iron Skillet Sports. We're at Iron Skillet Sports. You can find this content right now. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you go and subscribe. Yeah. Make sure you like it. Make sure you share it with someone else. And I know this for a fact. Those of you who are able to share the sizzle with your loved ones over the holiday season, you were blessed with the gift of love. Your family now loves you. They wow. didn't tell you they didn't like you before, that, what happened, but yeah. now they love you. Yeah, just it's, because it's, just because you shared the sizzle. That's it. That's not, it. Not because you did anything else. Not no, because, they don't care. They don't yeah, care about the gifts. That, 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 you, went, that you went and sold your car to go get that, that uh, PlayStation 5. For seventeen thousand dollars, no, 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 that wasn't it. That wasn't it. What it really was was you shared the sizzle, and you gave it as the gift of love. So we appreciate you. We are so thankful that we have another year to share the yeah. best information in sports, the best information around the world with you, and we want you to subscribe. So you know what to do. You know who it is. You know what it is. It's the sizzle here on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron.